Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, everybody. Uh, just uh, on behalf of MIT Architecture alumni, I welcome all of you to our today's program uh, by Luis Calvet. It's, uh, it's a great uh, lecture about Ed Alfonso Cerdas uh, urban project for Barcelona, one of the nicest cities, one of the nicest cities uh, which uh, you could encounter with. Uh, uh, this is part of the uh, global initiative uh, program we have uh, in architecture alumni. We have had uh, many, many, many lectures, and uh, we hope you enjoy it and uh, continue attending our uh, program. Now, Luis Calvet is uh, is an architect. Uh, graduated at the Polytechnic University of Barcelona in 1976. Then he got his uh, master's degree in advanced studies in environmental design at, the, uh, at MIT in 1979. And then uh, in 1993, he got his uh, PhD, uh, Doctoral de Arquitectura, also at the Polytechnic University of Barcelona. From 19, 1980 to 2001, he uh, was a professor uh, in the Department of Urban Urbanism and Urban Planning of the School of Architecture uh, of Barcelona. He, uh, during those years, he participated in uh, uh, many international conferences and congress in urban education and practice. Uh, in recent years, uh, he's been uh, teaching in, uh, in at the University of Lima in Peru. He taught at the Pontifical Catholic University, uh, the University of Lima, and the National University of Engineering and Architecture, where he currently teaching uh, he's teaching a doctoral course. Uh, professionally, he's uh, he's been the director of projects of the urban planning coordination of the Barcelona City Council. It was uh, from 1987 to 1992. Uh, during the city's transformation process for the preparation of the Barcelona Olympic Games in 1992. Then from 2004 to uh, 2010, he was the director of the urban planning area of the Ruby City Council, which is on the second periphery of Barcelona. Uh, he has developed numerous plans, urban planning and, and buildings in, uh, in Spain, as well as in Peru. Uh, actually, he was a consultant in, in, in Venezuela uh, some time ago in the 1990s for some urban development plans in the city. Uh, nowadays, he's a consultant for the Ministry of Housing and the Metropolitan Planning Institute of the city of Lima, uh, working on the urban planning law and the Metropolitan Plan of Lima. Uh, he has received uh, numerous awards, including a runner-up and Honorable mention in the National Urbanism Awards of 1993 and 87, uh, uh, granted by the Ministry of Public Works in Spain for his uh, urban planning proposal for the depressed peripheral areas of Barcelona. And recently, very recently, he won the Architecture and City Awards, uh, which is given by the Peruvian Chamber of Construction for a complex real estate development project and for the creation of innovative public space for the city. So it's an honor for us, uh, the architecture alumni community of MIT to uh, have uh, Luis, uh, dear good friend, uh, <laughs> giving us this uh, wonderful uh, lecture. So you go ahead, Luis. Okay. It's my turn. Okay, uh, hello to everybody. Um, I would like to thank all the people from the MIT Alumni Association uh, who invited me and organized this conference and also to all the people who are joining us today. I have to share, uh, I'm gonna share my, my images of the presentation. If everything works, uh, okay, okay. 
Okay. Screen sharing, okay. Um, No, I think it's okay. Well, I would like to, to start the conference with this beautiful image of the city of Barcelona that shows a fragment, a part of the project proposed by Ildefonso Cerda, is the name uh, that probably you know, many of you uh, know of the engineer and architect who designed the extension uh, for the city of Barcelona in 1859, that means 150 years ago. And with this image that shows uh, this uh, incredible, or maybe unique, uh, regular grid layout, uh, with this uh, pattern of square blocks that probably we cannot find anywhere. Um, Cerda start uh, proposed or start design the, the extension of the city of Barcelona that until then uh, was uh, remained, had remained enclosed within the medieval uh, walls. The conference aims to interpret why the, this innovative project uh, for Barcelona, designed by Defonso Cerda, as I said before, more than 150 years ago, which today has become, become a great, great urban reality, as you can see in this picture that shows more or less the, 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 the whole center extension of Barcelona. We can appreciate uh, partially the, 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 the grid. Why, the, the, the point is, uh, why uh, this model of city, of this, this project, uh, is of a great interest, uh, especially today, that um, there are many things to, rev to review uh, about how the city should be, especially after the, uh, the, the problems of uh, the pandemia, the, the COVID pandemia, the changes uh, of uh, sustainability, uh, climate change, and all these aspects that are influencing uh, very strongly to think, uh, to rethink no, about uh, how sh cities should be. Uh, in the case of Barcelona Center, this area projected by Ildefonso Cerda, probably uh, three aspects will be uh, fundamental to, to, to explain in order to, to have an idea of if this city, this model is really uh, or not uh, a sustainable city. In that case, because uh, its compacity, as you can see in the picture, we see a city very compact, its functional complexity, that means that uh, there are the uses are very diverse and combined in the, in the same space. And also, the adaptability to sustainable solutions. This is something we are looking for in many of our cities. Before uh, talking about the, the specific questions, I would like just to introduce a little bit some references of Barcelona, uh, of the project, uh, the Cerda project in Barcelona uh, for the people who doesn't know the city. Just uh, two, two pictures to show, like in this uh, aerial view, where we see uh, the, the grid uh, and Barcelona that um, is mainly uh, known internationally uh, because the special transformation uh, that the city uh, made in 1992 before the Olympic Games 
where the 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 harbor um, industrial harbor was transformed in a in a very uh, beautiful uh, public space where the seafront uh, was open to the city and new neighborhoods like uh, the Villa Olympic Olympic Village was built to open the city to the to the sea to the seafront. Also, to 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 have an idea of the the importance of this area we are going to talk today, uh, I, I prefer I I choose this plan, this drawing which shows uh, like um, zoning system regulation of the city of Barcelona, no? where we can see the importance of this area we are going to, we are going to talk today. Uh, with this structure, uh, very clear uh, grid uh, of streets uh, between the old city and the modern city that has uh, follow patterns very different. But here we can only have the idea of the importance of the layout uh, that the structure, the relation between uh, the old and the, and the new city. To focus the discussion, we will try to answer four fundamental questions about the project and how it has adapted, adapted to changes over time. This is what interests to, to, to us now. First question, why Cerda project for Barcelona is so unique among many other projects of the same time that were done at the same time, using also a traditional way of making projects in the 19th century city, in the 19th century, with geometric rationality uh, of the grid as a design layout. layout. Let's say, uh, what is the special, special things we can recognize in Cerda uh, layout. Also, there is something very interesting is to discover how this block uh, that Cerda proposed, that we will uh, uh, see, analyze in a few minutes, allow for the construction of a compact and order the city. And at the same time, uh, having the possibility of uh, uh, to have diversity, uh, a big diversity, a large diversity of building and mixed uses. So a city that from the beginning and up to today is uh, having this uh, continuous activity and, uh, and interested, interesting use uh, mixed. A third question we would like to answer also is the layout of the streets, of the streets, the street layout, which probably is the most visible and uh, more uh, important aspect that we can recognize in Cerdas uh, project. Is has been a, a support for traffic uh, since uh, since the, since the old times up to today, and how these um, streets and why they can adapt to current forms of urban mobility actually, which uh, is a point that most of the city are fighting uh, to uh, take away uh, the traffic and uh, from, the, from, from the streets and make a city more livable. And of course, uh, what has been the role and of the regulations that have changed uh, and now are changing the, the city orientation uh, dynamic uh, toward a more sustainable city model. We will try to explain or to answer all these questions. Just one point is that is, is necessary before talking about uh, these points uh, to mention the research of Manuel Sola Morales and the Laboratorio de Urbanismo of the Barcelona School that made, uh, made a, a, a lot of research on cities uh, that uh, based uh, uh, on geometrical layout, 
uh, to uh, around the world, and also and especially to Joan Busquets, who from graduate school of design at Harvard actually uh, is and in recent years has provided uh, new perspectives of the role of this type of cities in global urban development. Let's say uh, we are talking then about a uh, uh, type of city. The first point is why uh, Barcelona, we say, is so unique in the sense uh, of geometry and particular uh, layout. Uh, in this image that reflects, uh, this is a group of uh, uh, different city blocks around the world in different cities. Uh, among them, uh, the studies that uh, John Busquet, the research did, shows that the Ensanche of Cerda and the block of Cerda is a block that together with the build area creates uh, something very a square block uh, with a courtyard inside, a big courtyard, which is quite different from most of the um, other morphologies uh, of the other blocks that uh, develop many, many other cities. So uh, we have, first of all, uh, some conclusions uh, with this comparison of more than 100 uh, cities that explain that this singularity, uh, the, the size of the block is very large, we will see now, uh, the square shape is very singular, and as we will see, the cut corners on 45 degrees is something that uh, never seen in any other, in any other city. Uh, and its capacity, uh, as we see, is very important because uh, it's based pri principally in between the height of the buildings is, is the same of the wide of the streets. So that capacity uh, uh, is, um, is given by this morphology of, of, of the block. Normally, as we, we know, most of the cities uh, that work with grids have oriented the grid layout. Let's say the blocks are uh, not square, are rectangular, because they want to um, differentiate uh, between the two directions. Let's see Manhattan, uh, that has this, uh, uh, this shape of a block 240 by 60 meters, and uh, Ferda uh, has uh, square blocks which means that uh, something is different, no? The, the, the oriented grid layout wants always to give a different between the streets uh, in one direction or another direction. In, in the case of Manhattan is very clear, the avenues and the streets horizontal. In Barcelona, uh, the question is, the point is that the block, since it's a square block, uh, generates an uh, isotropic grid layout. There is no difference between the two uh, types or kind of uh, directionality of the streets. That means it's isotropic. Uh, that gives our urban response uh, very, very different. May probably a much more uh, repeated uh, shape, but uh, with some other con connotation. We, we can to see also some interesting points. For example, the size of the block of Manhattan, which is very, very large, is not so far the, the, the size of, of, of the block in Barcelona. As we see in these little sketches design, uh, we see the square block of Barcelona that has inside a, a space that uh, should, uh, that is an addition not normally not uh, not designed in any grid because the square uh, shape uh, with the size of the perimeter in that case generates this uh, like a parceling inside system inside an extra space we will see the influence of this decision in the in the transformation of the city 
before enter to the discussion of uh, the new um, lines of the political uh, action uh, with the city, actual, uh, we would like to review um, quickly uh, some aspects of the project. This is a plan where we see the empty space of Barcelona, where the old uh, medieval city walls existed and some of the peripheral settlements uh, uh, villages that surrounded Barcelona. This is the huge space empty that Terda should uh, to, uh, to discuss, to study and to, pro pro to propose uh, over, over it uh, this, this uh, project. And if we just change at the same more or less scale, this drawing shows an incredible project that was done in 1859. Uh, how someone could have this vision uh, of the future uh, for the city. This a future that uh, makes uh, Cerda uh, a visionary, almost, we can say a visionary person who is understanding the social and economic development, the development of the cities uh, after or during the industrialization of the 19th century. And Barcelona, in that case, uh, was taken as a, a, a prototype for, for, for Cerda, to, to implement his ideas and theories that he had uh, wrote, wrote, written in a, in a very interesting book um, about how the city uh, should be, how the future city should be. In that case, there are many things we can see just in this, in this map. First of all, uh, the size, how someone can make a proposal 10 times larger in area than the old city, existing city. That means someone that was thinking on the future. He was thinking that he knew uh, other cities like New York uh, and other cities. He travels around the world and he studied many cities and saw uh, and, and, and understood this possibility that the city needs uh, potentiality you know, to grow. Also, it's very interesting to, to see all the little, in this image, uh, almost 2,000 blocks, square blocks, were uh, in making uh, the, the filling, the whole ex open extension around the city of Barcelona, no? with this isotropic uh, image it idea of uh, blocks that we will see of 30, 113 and by 113 uh, meters. We also see uh, that the, the project is more complex than I just agreed. The, 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 we will see very interesting, we see some streets that are larger and that are most import, more important than, and especially with using a different geometry. This is not uh, uh, occasionally, this is not just a game, is because the two, uh, as we will see in a moment, uh, he understood uh, the two scales, the local scale for the, for the development of the city uh, within this pattern, and also to offer to the city a pattern to, to, to have the tools to, to, to develop, and also to create a big structure in connection with the uh, territory, right? let's say. Uh, we will see now uh, the, this effect. If we analyze this, this grid, uh, and one very important uh, thing is the idea that the urban layout has uh, understand the large relationship uh, of the city of Barcelona with the the territory and the territory for Cerda was France to the north. So he uh, designed a special diagonal in that sense, which uh, is north south exactly, that uh, connects to the city with the, the outside uh, other country. And 
the parallel, this is called the meridian, so is a meridian, north-south, and the parallel that goes to Madrid to the east-west, uh, making also the, mm, the new, uh, the strong relation of the city to be tied to the territory outside. So Barcelona uh, will be thought as a very big capital in, the, in, the, in, in Spain. Also in yellow, we have two very special uh, mm, streets or avenues. One which is very clearly uh, um, horizontal a street that follows the, the directionality of the grid, the horizontal one that uh, relates the whole territory uh, and is tangent to the old city. So uh, is the first street that was uh, put uh, in the layout to make the division of the whole vertical streets. It's like the support, principal support. And something else that was very uh, curious by the time, by that time, uh, which is called the diagonal, uh, to create a new intersection Mm, explaining that this big city uh, should uh, think to have a new center when the old center of the city, medieval city, was inside. So it's very interesting this diagonal also because is only is not only an effect of uh, of circulation or mobility or uh, through the the whole grid in another direction, but it, it contributes also to to have this uh, to reinforce this idea of new, not new centrality. The streets. You're, I think that that's probably one of the most interesting things that people, when they come to Barcelona, when we study Barcelona, um, we value. The streets, uh, he designed the whole ensanche, we will call the ensanche, the, the project is extension, is ensanche, uh, with one, with three types of the streets, three types, but the, the, the more important and, and repeated the street is a street that he designed for the future, because by that time, the circulation was very low what uh, uh, the the um, the cars doesn't exist yet only the cars uh, with uh, vacuum um, some initiative but uh, or horses uh, but not the cars but he understood that this was coming because he visited new york he visited paris and he was understanding and he designed this kind of a street that has 20 meters wide uh, which for Barcelona is uh, three times larger than the most uh, widest, uh, widest streets in the old town. So it's something very big, 20 meters wide uh, for that moment. Uh, and, and a city of Barcelona, this was not Manhattan, is Barcelona 20 meters is incredible large because he thought that uh, very important to understand the movement. Uh, already. And the movement makes him to decide that the cross section of the street will be 50% for circulation and 50% for traffic, uh, for movement. That's something in solid. Uh, no, no, not mm, this size of sidewalks or the, the amount of space for people to walk was very, uh, very innovative aspect of the Cerda. Um, and also very interesting, she, she understood already that these uh, five meters in each uh, side of sidewalk was divided in two spaces, the space for walking and the space for delivery, the, 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 all the commerce and all this uh, interchange of um, things, goods uh, between the traffic. Also, another uh, symptomatic aspect, very singular, was the cut a corner at 45 degrees, uh, which make a, like a main plaza, designed especially because he wanted to make easier the turn of the tramway. We see that the tramway is, is start already and they need a big, uh, and to, he, to create also a space uh, different, no? a space that can be articulation, an articulation in the cross of the of the street and with this pattern 
uh, he designed the whole city uh, in in a very uh, in a very um, let's say way um, with no com com more complication. The block resulting block also is another point very interesting uh, between axes. Uh, is 133 meters by 133 meters. And uh, something that was also very important for, for Ferda, that study not only the layouts of the city and the blocks, is the orientation of the block. Since he made uh, a square block, he wanted to put the block 45 degrees angle north-south. Uh, in, in a way that the north only is where there is no sun, where there is no uh, sun, sunny light, uh, will be the minimum. And all the, 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 the perimeter and the faces of the block will have in the morning, sun in the morning, uh, of the uh, middle day, middle of the day, and in the afternoon. That was very important also because he was uh, thinking the importance of the hygiene and the light in the in the in, in a good way to 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 leave uh, people. Another aspect of this project that uh, for, is not probably the not the most uh, strong proposition of Terda, but he plays also in his proposition uh, at the beginning of his project is how to build these blocks. Of course, these blocks uh, by that time is, we see some fragment of his of his uh, drawings proposal uh, were built only in, in two two sides two sides of the block. Let's say he thought that no more than fifty percent of this of the blocks will be um, built. Uh, normally, making he proposed to make uh, gardens between um, different shapes that can make can do uh, some kind of uh, groups of 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 blocks and and buildings to create this uh, almost let's say garden city, uh, dense garden city. Uh, also, uh, because by that time he was thinking that the the, um, the evolution of the of the city uh, was going to take probably this 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 line of the of this this tradition of not uh, high density city that was very far from uh, what happened was very different. We will see in a moment uh, because very. Just in the moment after the Cerda plan was already started to be built, uh, the um, the Catalan people very quickly thought that was this was a very good business uh, to have uh, more intensity uh, built in the this square. We, they didn't want to lose so much uh, space, uh, open space for, uh, for for green green area, and they eat rapid very rapidly. They built the whole uh, crown uh, of the of the building of the block, generating this uh, idea, this image we have that the crown built crown of the bow of the, an, an empty or a big space, which is the patio, inner patio of the block. And this is uh, why uh, the, the ideal city of Cerda in that sense was not uh, successful uh, because of the, the social and economical decisions were much more interested in the business, in real estate uh, business. What interest to us also is to, to see how the city was built, the evolution of this idea through uh, an urban reality, where we will find the interest of this model of city, no? how through uh, how it has been developed through uh, all these uh, 150 years, and what is the future of this of this city? What represent this idea? Uh, the number one here is because, uh, as we you see, uh, the grid of the Cerda uh, has different parts and we are going to talk 
mainly about the central area, which was developed very uh, following the Cerdas uh, principles and the changes of the reg building regulation, because the area mm, located to the to the northeast, let's say here, will follow also the third degree, but was not developed until recent uh, years uh, because it was occupied by industrial areas. I will not talk about that uh, today because it will be too long, but it's very interesting and uh, new development areas that are following a new model of third idea. No? The interesting thing is how it was built. With three types of streets, he designed the whole city. He decided to make 20 meter streets. You see here the 20 meter streets. When he wanted to make a more important uh, street, he designed streets of 30 meters that allowed to have a promenade 19th century image idea of the promenade boulevard in, in the middle and streets of 50 meters for the big access we show you uh, in the last in uh, recently in the other picture the big access were 50 meters where he uh, designed uh, two boulevards this is very interesting because we will, we will see the change the circulation in the in the middle and the streets um, in uh, small streets in contact with the buildings. So the main circulation goes in the center of the street and two big boulevards uh, like the Paseo de Gracia, like many, uh, La Diagonal, many other streets. So with three types of streets, he designed the whole city. What else um, is giving form to the Ensanche as we recognize today? The urban facade. The urban facade of this city was done uh, mainly in a continuous way of building that touch one to, to other through a parceling system that uh, was responding uh, like uh, to the needs of the residential, uh, typical residential 19th century city um, with uh, the uh, with uh, four or five uh, high structures and in a very continuous way, even uh, when they arrive to the corner, uh, cut it. So this image of compacity and continuity is uh, in, uh, giving uh, a sense of real uh, continuous, uh, a little bit in this idea, we were talking about, we, we talk about the street corridor. But the interesting thing is that this square uh, unique uh, shape and size was uh, creating in through the through the consolidation through the growth of the city many different forms of uh, of land subdivision and this is why and that happened especially because of the size of the block normally when you have a a block uh, that is rectangular, uh, the, the, the possibilities of, of uh, land subdivision are mainly in, in width, but you cannot play uh, so, so many um, morphologies uh, like in Barcelona happen because we found uh, through this uh, research, a uh, very intense research, that many models, even some models like you see here, that are leaving the, the inside patio as a, as a parcel in itself because they don't need it. Uh, that, and many blocks were defined in land subdivision depending on the needs of the uh, developer. So we find um, a lot of diversity, but we don't see this diver diversity uh, because uh, the, the city maintains always this crown, build crown. So it's something structural. Also, the, 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 they apply sometimes to make the, the, the half of uh, when they want a more intensity uh, the, the, for build intensity, uh, they create a back alley uh, and they can use the inside potential uh, patio, inner patio for making uh, more housing uh, development. So we see here 
what happened and how flexible and how many possibilities uh, from the the typical block with the inner patio semi-built as we will take uh, Paul, uh, explain later the block uh, subdivided in two because they create a division to have more intensive intensive uh, build area in the in in and not have a big patio unified three blocks or four or five three by in that case three by three when they need to have a bigger uh, public facility that maybe is not uh, need more more land than one block but following the the, the grid system or uh, a block all the one block uh, uh, with uh, for a public facility like uh, 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 mercado i don't remember how to say in english a uh, commercial area for uh, one uh, block so all these activities uh, were and uh, models were put it together just playing with this grid uh, aggregation uh, of of um, possibilities how were the original residential typologies and what have uh, given to us uh, today. This is the type of building that was uh, built uh, in, in, in at the starting moment of the of the development, which is uh, based on a parcel system um, that accommodates the typical bourgeois uh, house. Uh, by the time normally is the the parceling system was between 14, and this is very important for the future, has been very important between 14 to 20 meters or 24 meters, no? So uh, depending of how rich or how many, how, how important was the, the house uh, that was going to be built, normally two, two flats per floor uh, in a tradition with a traditional inside patio, uh, and all the um, flats were he having the double ventilation since we have a patio inside a very big patio uh, it was very important to to have uh, the ventilation and the, the sleeping room used to be in the in the in the in the side side of the street and the inside used to be the kitchens very close the service area near the patio the staircase there was no elevator at the beginning, so the, the high of the buildings were four floors, and so not, not to 20, almost 20 meters, and uh, the living day uh, areas uh, in the back, uh, more uh, looking at the, at the gardens or the, the public spaces uh, inside. And appears something uh, very uh, strange that probably we will not find in any other um, grid or city is the typology of the corner. The corner in itself, since it was repeated four times in each block, was uh, making a type of building that has uh, the mm, something extra because has normally much more uh, large facade uh, but has uh, the contrary, as you can see, imagine, as you can imagine here, uh, the corner block doesn't, ha do not has a space to relate to the, to the main patio. So normally uh, they use the, the, the typology, use a bigger um, patios to create uh, light and, and, and ventilation but is a typology very specific that will uh, give to the ensanche uh, an extra uh, diversity uh, of uh, not only architecture, but also image and, uh, and space, urban space. No? So we have a city that was um, consolidated as a continuous facade and a very, very extra space, uh, which is the courtyard, that has been used in many, in many ways that as we will see in, in a few moments. Hmm? More domestic, uh, uh, that probably uh, very few uh, grids uh, have this possibility because we are talking about a uh, space that has 60 meters by 60 meters approximately. 
The corner, of course, became uh, a difficulty for the architects to solve, not so easy because ventilation was very important. And, uh, but um, the more desirable uh, uh, parcels because of the protagonist uh, image in the city. So we have here, well, you probably will know uh, the, how Gaudi solved uh, this, this project in the corner, de la Pedrera, with these in, inside patios, but always in the more representative architecture of the modernism, Catalan modernist, modernist uh, um, typology of buildings uh, were um, done in the in the corners. So the corners are the the, the best. You're normally you try you try you find the, some of the best architecture. The important thing is how this uh, structure uh, has evo uh, uh, this evolution. Uh, the, the most easier thing we find is that the typical uh, two dwellings per, per, per floor was to maintaining a similar, the, the same parceling system, uh, we could, that was too big for the standards, uh, modern standards, let's say in the 1950s and 60s and 70s, uh, was to divide in four. So maintaining the same uh, land subdivision, we could increase the density uh, very, uh, two times, uh, plus uh, one or two floors that could be maybe added that depending on the regulation that were changing. But this was the easiest and one of the fantastic thing uh, that the old houses, even you, you, the old houses, many times they were sub subdivided or the new housing uh, type were already done uh, with four, four, four dwellings per, per floor. Of course, when the rationality and the possibility of having more than one um, parcel to, to be added to another appears more rational uh, idea of concentrating the patios uh, inside and having the, the circulation as a, as a special space, more, more not so, so tight and have, but the same idea, always using the same um, band uh, area, buildable area. So um, the evolution of the type and the combination of old and new uh, has been always a discussion of uh, mainly not of the shape of the building and not the, the, the intensity of the building, uh, square, how many square meters, how high, etc. is mainly how it, uh, it adapts to the facade and it adapts to the parceling system. So uh, very easily we have, we find that this in Sanchez, this area is plenty of diversity that lives together, the old houses, uh, that were uh, now are very protected and you cannot, uh, you have to maintain the facade uh, and the new uh, housing or uh, hotels uh, and any kind of, of typology that uh, is compatible with the housing residential area. So this diversity give a very rich uh, image of a, of, a, of a city in terms of diversity. But what happened, we are saying that uh, the, the Ensanche is not only compact, uh, compacity is a very interesting uh, value of the city in terms of sustainability, but also uh, the non-residential activities, uh, how they have been managed. To explain that, I put this uh, cross section that explain um, the regulations, more speculative regulations that were done uh, in the 50s, which um, allows to, to build inside of the, the, of the patios. Uh, and this was the worst um, decision um, against to pre preserve uh, gardens, private gardens, or maybe community gardens. But at the same time, 
was something that made possible that many, many, many um, activities like uh, parking, like uh, commerce and, and so on, and other activities like uh, were built, uh, like uh, facilities were built uh, in, inside of the, of the courtyard. And this, this make also a very important capacity to, uh, to a, a allow uh, diversity uh, and to create life on the street and many activities that are not residential with all the problems of coexistence. But this is also important to, to take in, in, in account. Also, Cerdas, how it evolved, Cerdas public facility proposal and reality. Cerdas was proposing a very simple model where Every three by three blocks, he was putting a, a block with a destination of a church and a market, public market, as a, as a thought of um, creating um, uh, facilities uh, distribution. The reality is that if we see this area, because I don't see this, that this has been uh, the, the recent transformation, but if we see the old area we are talking, we see that the, the green areas uh, doesn't exist. And that's why uh, our city is very important uh, life on the street. And we have a, a very important life on the street, but we don't have uh, area green areas enough for uh, the people who wants to live there. No? And this is one of the main problems uh, of, the, the, of this type of city that we are trying to, to, to arrange, to, to fight against. We will see. And just to, to finish, because I don't want to be too, too long in my explanation, uh, comes the, the question no? the, the, I, we was um, having at the, at the beginning. The Ensanche, this type of, of city, this uh, compact and special form of city is an example of urban sustain, sustainability. I would say that in some aspects, uh, of course it is. And uh, there are many, many researchers uh, and uh, professionals that are looking into the Ensanche of Barcelona again, uh, because probably uh, the, the adapt adaptability uh, of this type of city um, to, to changes, because mainly because, of course, uh, the dimensions uh, that Cerda offers uh, 150 years ago, which is the, the, the point. Of course, um, if you come to Barcelona, if you, if you read about Barcelona, you will see that uh, the benchmark urban fabric of Barcelona is the Ensanche, is the, is the center of the metropolitan system because uh, it's a fabric uh, where all the principal activities uh, have, uh, be, have been able to, to be located. No? We are talking about an area almost 800 hectares. And I put three uh, parameters that give us the sense of sustainability in some aspects of sustainability. Hmm? Mainly uh, the, the high space for circulation uh, in Cerdas grid is very high. Probably we will not find many cities that has a 36, almost 37% of the land is uh, for roads. With the important thing is that the roads or the streets are uh, for pedestrian also. We are not talking about uh, roads for uh, traffic only. Uh, in contraposition to that, uh, we have a low percentage of green areas uh, and we have to fight uh, is one of the, the points we are working on uh, since, um, since 1992 uh, up to date. We have also a public transportation that generates an offer of public very, very good the density. Density is another point uh, that is being uh, discussed very, uh, around the world now. The population of the Ensanche, the important thing is about 310 uh, 
3,000 no, 3, um, inhabitants, which is a, about uh, a high density for us, for our cities, but has the problem that we, since we don't have uh, green areas, the ratio of green areas per inhabitant is very, very low. In the contrast with that, we have a lot of job jobs available. So we have a proportion uh, per hectare very similar in density. Let's say almost uh, 56, 44 uh, percent uh, of the of the the space build the space uh, has destination for both. Uh, centrality tries always to uh, make uh, stronger the the areas for activities not residential. In the case of Barcelona and Sanche, um, the possibilities uh, of living space uh, and the quality of what the municipality has been doing to, to improve the quality of life in the Ensanche, as we will see now in, in some aspects, uh, is making the attraction to, to, to people to, to, to live in the Ensanche, eh, in this area. So it's attraction for all kinds of activities. Of course, uh, the far, uh, uh, as you said in, 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 in English, uh, the ratio of buildable, buildable area per, per, per square meter is almost five. Of course, it's not for, for, for uh, another, for Manhattan is nothing. Probably Manhattan has uh, three or four times uh, uh, higher far, but uh, is a very, uh, it's, it situates uh, in a very idea of a dense city uh, without not being too 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 uh, too dense, uh, so so it's in a in a in a point where density becomes uh, becomes interesting to 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 talk about sustainability, and mixed uses is the probably um, the most uh, one of the most interesting things that offers the Ensanche and the flexibility that has to accommodate diversity of uses and architecture. And this is very important today. So just to finish, uh, I would like to, to talk about the three, three of the um, lines of action or strategies that the city is doing, is working to, to, to make more sustainable the Ensanche and to preserve this area as a very important piece of the city. Uh, where it will be possible to live, work, and uh, have a, a lot of uh, public facilities. Um, three aspects has been worked. I will be, first of all, uh, the streets. You know that uh, almost all the cities are discussing uh, now the, the impact uh, as, as never had before uh, happened before, the impact of the traffic. And Barcelona had, was very um, pioneer in taking decisions about to change, in that case, the big access into a civic access. This, this, that, the diagonal and the meridiana here, the main streets, uh, but at the same time, the more potential streets for to be a, a public uh, access uh, acts to, 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 to change traffic by, by other possibilities and it has been improved uh, and already uh, on, the, on the work and they have been already changed into a different models. Uh, something very systematic is that the promenades, like the, the diagonal, you remember 50 meters in the center was the, the circulation. Now the future, the now the new the new diagonal just in the in the center put the the tramway, the cycle, the mm, cycle and the promenade pedestrian. So they changed the the the, the, the functioning of the cross section. Uh, and they leave, they make bigger and large, larger sidewalks 
to the instead of having the sidewalks as a promenade maintaining all the trees and the the, the elements of uh, of public space and in the in the in the meridiana also the same so we have this this new um change uh, where traffic is penalized uh, against the the potentiality of of public uh, pedestrian areas uh, Paseo de San Juan is another main street. In that case, uh, reduce the traffic to only two lines, and has create. Uh, we are changing the, the the relation between the building facade and the street. Before was the sidewalk and the and the cars. Now is the big sidewalk, uh, the f most important, and that has change a lot the, the the quality of the of the city we are also working in typical streets of 20 meters to change some hierarchical uh, possibilities that uh, that could be um, also done because we have a grid and since the grid is a system of street that relates in many ways uh, so very rich in connectivity uh, that offer these possibilities. You probably have heard because it's a big discussion, uh, not only in Barcelona, that this, but Barcelona was a pioneer also in this idea, the super block. Uh, and that means that uh, maybe we can think that uh, instead of having all the streets with cars, all the streets with delivery, all the streets with pedestrian, maybe we can work Barcelona in a three by three block aggregation to make the traffic only to uh, move uh, principal, uh, uh, around, uh, through these streets and uh, having a more pacifier uh, um, a space uh, inside for people walking deliveries and car parking. This idea uh, also um, wanted to, to to be implemented in the whole in Sanche, creating uh, these uh, big um, super blocks. But uh, really, really, uh, this is something that has been discussed because uh, and people are many people are against this idea because we understand that the center of the city, as the in Sanche, cannot lose uh, and, and put the traffic on very few. Uh, streets, uh, because these streets, unless you take the traffic out, which is very difficult, will be uh, too many, too too strong with uh, uh, with the, the the cars that cannot uh, circulate and the private streets inside. And we we will create like ghettos, no? Like the the city structure of centrality in that case is very rich because every 133 meters we can we can deal with the with the street and we have a lot of possibilities and we have to understand that barcelona is a city uh, of the streets i would say no but the good street is the is the city instead of that there is something that maybe you have seen recently project recent project of changing the idea of superblock to new civic access uh, which is the main idea we are working now. Instead of making a model of a hierarchical city made by groups of blocks three by three, is to create some special acts like we did in in one main street, uh, Consejo de Consejo de Sen. Uh, it is called the Green Access uh, as a proof to see that uh, also. This is very uh, is another way of understanding uh, the, the 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 idea of um, creating more public space and green areas without changing the the main structure of the of the city the whole city. Uh, this has been very successful. It's just um, in a, was uh, starting to be used uh, last summer. And really, uh, we we realized in 20 meters wide uh, street, which Cerda gave to us uh, 150 years ago, uh, how many things we can we can do in, in a cross section. Also, the intersection 
uh, that uh, typical intersection that repeats every 133 meters uh, creates uh, spaces very interesting because is uh, the court corner uh, make us uh, about 45, uh, 50 meters by 50 meters. So we are talking about uh, almost a, a traditional medieval plaza, no? But 50 meters by 50 meters, which is uh, quite interesting. And, and we can find it every 100 meters. A second um, poly, uh, strategy uh, is, as you probably had imagined, is why don't come back to the Cerdas idea of having the in, inside patches of the blocks, uh, public space that we need, and maybe some public facilities also, libraries, uh, cultural centers, or whatever people uh, need. And um, that's a, a policy that um, when the Ian Sanchez has been analyzed uh, deeply, we found that there are many blocks uh, that have the possibility of recuperate this uh, inside uh, space uh, in a more um, uh, in a more residential way for people that needs this space. And in little by little, we have been um, modifying. This is a map that shows all the interventions have, that has been done already. There are many others that could be, uh, that in, in, in fact, uh, depending of the, on the possibilities that these models of land subdivision, as I told you uh, before, uh, were done. For example, we have this, uh, when when the the the, the inside block uh, the court was uh, in in the hands uh, of private but in the hands of a company that owns the whole the whole patio uh, is has been very much easier so that is giving us uh, spaces uh, in this extra space some more recent um, projects uh, that have been very successful because that we, we have to understand that the, when, when we said that the Cerda block was and the patio was being um, the, the used in a diversity of ways, uh, means also that in the beginning, in the 19th century city, uh, um, um, the 19th century, the many industries of the textile were also located inside of the patios because it was a, a very uh, usable space. And the recuperation of, uh, of many of these uh, old industries, maintaining the, some elements, uh, built elements like this chimney, have made possible to uh, recreate a new uh, public facilities uh, tied to the to the to the residential areas that need public space uh, also. So is is a potential or this other case where is more uh, like the idea of creating in a block that in a block that is more residential uh, to create a new new system, ways of uh, coming through walking through it or creates a, a public uh, green space. So we have a, a potential. We have to remember that each uh, block has at least uh, 60 by 60 meters uh, uh, um, area of, of, a, of, a, of a open space, uh, at least not built in, in, in high, in the what we call the inner patio. Or other possibilities like uh, this, uh, maintaining uh, the, the 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 relation to, with the private gardens in the at the level of the street, and then uh, clearing and putting uh, some other activities in the center. That is a richness and a very important strategy that is giving uh, an extra uh, possibility to the ensanche to. To, to serve as a future uh, way, uh, part of the city to, to live in. Eh? That is making these possibilities. 
just to 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 talk about the regulation of course uh, all this doesn't happen uh, by itself is the also the regulation the city that is now understanding that even though um, the crown the bill crown is giving the 70 percent of the block is built area that means that is very huge percentage but the incredible thing is a geometrical logic is since the built area is on the, in the crown, uh, it counts a lot of percentage you occupy and you can leave the 60 by 60 meters inside, which is the only the 30% of the block. So we are dealing with parameters uh, of high density, uh, but uh, where the, 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 the um, the size of the block is, is giving us this opportunity. And to, just to finish with image, this image that uh, I think uh, is the, the idea of this, this type of city. Uh, we live in, in actually, uh, and we, want, we believe that uh, has to offer uh, at least uh, an interesting reflection uh, or thinking about how should be uh, our cities uh, in the future. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Um, we have a few questions. Yes. And um, so the first one is from um, Edith Harrell. And uh, please forgive me if I'm not saying that correctly. Um, which which other cities in Spain, Europe, or the Americas in the 19th or 20th or 21st century have followed uh, Cerda's system as you described it? And why or why not did they, they follow it? Well, uh, in fact, uh, there are in the 19th century, there were many cities that choose uh, uh, design the, the new development using a grid system. That's that's uh, that's uh, something. Uh, and before the 19th century, uh, the 19th century also. The point is that Cerda um, has his own theory, and that's why he's different in many aspects. Cerda uh, was a person uh, that has been studying. Uh, this is a theoret is a the the theoric man that uh, has um, written uh, the theory of urbanization, where he explained all the principles of how the cities should be uh, before doing the ensanche. The point is that uh, since this, after the Spanish War. The civil war, uh, Cerdas' uh, proposals and books disappear, and it was in the seventies when they uh, we found uh, these th these books and all these theories that was forgotten from uh, for many many years, and the Ensanche uh, under the the regime of uh, the dictatorial regime of Franco. Uh, was and the, the political not democracy we had in Spain, uh, the Ensanche of Barcelona was being degraded uh, very much. Nobody took care about it. Not so, uh, the buildings uh, were uh, turned down, many interesting buildings, there was no building protection, so on. The traffic uh, was the, the main issue to, to manage and all the streets were traffic and traffic and the, the sidewalks. But the point is that Cerda, with this, uh, to answer the question, is uh, Cerda had a theory. And this theory uh, um, what made unique because he thought, for example, uh, that the city should be isotropic. That's something that nobody took uh, uh, call. Uh, thought about that before. So he had some inspiration that trans, uh, made that the city should be very equal for, for everybody. 
uh, is a connection between society. Cerda was not only an architect and an engineer, was he, and a topographer, uh, his main um, um, professional qualities, but he was a man that works, uh, thought a lot about social uh, problems. In fact, uh, the Cerda project uh, was done in uh, to make a um, a comparison a comparison between the old town to to offer to the city uh, to the old town that was very congested like London uh, a very very dense and, and uh, anti hygienic uh, way of living. So that was thinking that this and Sanchez was something um, also for the for the for the people. Uh, Good, let's say for the the so he has some mentality um, that uh, social mentality, and this is together mixed with the knowledge of the topography, the the the, the criteria of uh, traffic. He was very interested in 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 mechanical things also how the work how the city should work. He was an engineer also, <laughs> so these two things together. Uh, have made possible probably this unique uh, uh, layout. So we cannot found any other uh, system, uh, grid system applied yeah, to uh, uh, two thousand hectares like this. No, interesting. And uh, James Carr asked, "What was the governmental structure at the time?" Um, the government that commissioned the plan and put it into effect and and also what was there before was there a demolition of existing structure or was it an undeveloped area of the city yeah well the point is uh, i didn't uh, talk about that because it was too, uh, it, it would be too too long in fact the the government by that time was uh, the, the, uh, the isabel segunda was uh, the the queen of spain uh, a monarchy hmm? and by that time um catalan always have been um uh, like uh, having their own ideas and they when when the law in Spain the general law say that all the cities should make uh, an extension because uh, the, many of the cities were wallet cities coming from Barcelona uh, organized a competition and this competition is very interesting because uh, participate in this competition were the, the, the most important architects of the modernism, Pucci Cadafalc, uh, Domenici Montaner, and all these uh, representative architects that uh, represent the local uh, identity. And um, when um, and Cerda was not in the, in the competition, and the project, almost all the projects uh, that were designed in the competition were looking the city as a layout more in the Renaissantist way, looking more um, access, uh, small uh, development, no, half of what Terda thought. I mean, looking at the extension of the city as a project that it could be managed by one hand. Uh, in in few years, no, like, like another model of city. Of course, uh, doing access, uh, monumental access, and these ideas of the moment, no, looking at Paris, no, Paris, uh, what Hausmann did in Paris, we can reproduce here, also things like that. Not in the old, but in the new, no, access and so on. And and um, uh, Madrid uh, said that uh, none of this project uh, should be built, and uh, they said that. Cerda project will be built. <laughs> oh. So they impose wow. Cerda. And that makes, if you read newspaper from the time, uh, Catalan people were, uh, local people were against Cerda. They were saying that it was a monotonous uh, city. Uh, the city should not be like a systematic uh, pattern. The city should be access, monumental access, and all these, these ideas of more uh, renaissantist ideas. So, um, and Cerda 
Uh, but at the same time, uh, Cerda um, was uh, imposed by the the central government, and and they and they put it. And Cerda, in fact, works for the municipality of Barcelona to prepare this plan. Okay, but it was a lot of controversy in, in that. Um, and really? the, the question, the government, and he said some other thing. Um, no, it was just that was oh. the the governmental structure, which I think you okay. more or less addressed mm -hmm. that too. Um, James also asked, and I'm going to add on to it. Um, what is the what was the plan for firefighting access in the courtyard? And related to that, um, I would like to ask who can who could access the center, the patios? Well, well, about the fire access. Mm, uh, the, the the fire access uh, there is no fire access to the okay. courtyard <laughs> systematically you can uh, so because it's a is a space that you should reach uh, through through the through the top of the buildings or there is no or through the inside of or through the the same building you can access but that could be um, broken in parts also. But the point is, the the block, how the block was put it in, the block was, uh, all this structure was superposed to a, a agricultural land, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And the shape of the agricultural land has nothing to do with the grid system. So, mm -hmm. uh, the the interesting point is that the construction of the ensanche, the most important thing that Cerda did by itself, because he was the supervisor also of the project, was the layout of the streets. You see that the streets have been something, yes or yes. I mean, <laughs> the streets are there in the way he thought they should be. There were no changes. And that means uh, all the streets, and they have to respect. But once the streets were built, inside of the block, you can have many different agricultural uh, layout remaining. So uh, to most of the, the way the Ensanche was built, which is another thesis, is very interesting, is through real estate companies. Mm -hmm. uh, that were managing the, the the shape of the agricultural land to reparceling into buildable land. So it was a a, a change, organized change uh, to to define the 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 how a block should be built. As I show you one image that the diversity of land subdivision that we have found. So uh, the response to, to the question is in depending on the interest of the, the owner or owners of the block remaining once the block was ready to be built, they, they have paid the street, I mean the 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 I don't how, know how to say in English, but the private was paying the public, the right. public spaces. Of course, hmm? the Sterda knew a lot of this. Also, hmm? he knew many things, and once they decided the model they wanted to do with this parceling system, uh, each prop if each owner uh, had received part of different parcels, they define a model. And this model, they were parceling. So you have lots of um, blocks that is, all the block is parcel. So you have a parcel that is 50 meters deep. Oh. I mean, your your own patio belongs to to the house, to the, the, the street level. And you have many, many little patios. But sometimes uh, you had an industry that wanted to occupy uh, the whole inside inner block because they can build the perimeter. Uh, the perimeter is something uh, that you can build always. But since the block is so large, 
and a square, this inside sometimes remains in the hand of one property only, or maybe two. So we have a casuistic of many, many different ways, and th that belongs to the private. None of these spaces were given to the public. None. That's the point. But now we are trying to uh, recuperate some of this privacy with the obsolescence of the users, so expropriation, negotiation, exit, so on, transferring buildable area. That there is also many many ways we are trying in some possible possibly some blocks to convert change to a public space. But in fact, you you find a lot of uh, differences one block from the others. But normally private, private always. Um, interesting. So we have now many more questions than we probably have time for. But two people have asked if Serda was a, was aware of L'Enfant plan for Washington D.C. or Ellicott's plan uh, in 1791 or Ellicott's plan 1792 um, that also had ideas about equity in planning. Um, and then um, one other person, yeah, we have maybe one or two other questions after that, if you can answer that one quickly. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, yes, uh, for that one, one point we discovered uh, after when we uh, found all these, um, his, his books, uh, his theory, uh, we okay. found because there are two or two books very important, uh, we found uh, all the knowledge he had. So uh, he travels a lot. Uh, he knew uh, probably uh, he did. He didn't mention uh, the project of La Femme for Washington. He mentioned, of course, Manhattan um, and many other. Um, I, I I don't remember. But he had a lot of um, of knowledge about what was going on. Uh, and how, of course, Paris, uh, and probably um, he took many ideas, but he made, but the, the interesting thing is he, all these ideas, he translated these ideas for his own, in, into his own project, because I think it's very singular. I mean, uh, L'Enfant has also that diagonal, no? Mm. But, but these are, um, this is something that uh, in, in that case, um, that also was something very, on in a, in a, in a, everybody likes to have a diagonal, no, in in in, in this grids, not to change the 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 morphology, to change the, the the rigid image of the of the spread of the grid, no, and probably he 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 understood that that I don't we don't know the idea where it comes from. The thing that we know is that the diagonal has become uh, something very structural even to the city, but in a different way than the grid, no? So we don't know, but yes, of course, he knew a lot of, of other cities. Okay. Um, I think that we're out of time. I will turn it back over to Jose to with some closing remarks and also thanks for uh, people who've worked with you, Luis, on the presentation. And um, we'll try to get responses to the remaining questions out by email. Thank you. Okay. Thank you to you. Thank you, everybody, for assisting to this uh, wonderful uh, lecture. Obviously, Luis is uh, kind of an encyclopedia on, on Barcelona. Uh, and it's, uh, this is something so, you know, so dense that it would be wonderful to have like a Barcelona part two, Luis. It's, uh, it's such a an extraordinary uh, example, not not perhaps of, of a city as a form, but as a city as a system, because I think what Sir Dad did was a system of building a city, mm. and that's why it has so it has so you know so many options. So thank you again, Luis. Uh, it was a great see you again. <laughs> <laughs> and, see you too. Uh, Thank you, everybody, and uh, please uh, uh, keep uh, on uh, interested in our uh, MIT Architecture Alumni programs. We'll be, uh, be sending you our next uh, activities. 
So thank you, everybody. Have a great uh, have a great night in Europe. Have a great afternoon in uh, in the in the U.S. and Latin America, and have a great morning in Asia. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, by the way, wait. Uh, two outstanding members of Metarca, Emily Wang and Greg Iboshi, helped Luis uh, setting up this uh, program. They are uh, nowadays they are in Barcelona. They're living between California and Barcelona. And uh, we thank you so very much, Emily and Greg, and uh, mm -hmm. hope you keep enjoying Barcelona. Okay. We are going. We are going to meet now to have a drink. With Emily really? and Gregory. <laughs> great. <laughs> Just well, now, in, in half an hour, we will be together. <laughs> okay, great. So, okay. you everybody, see you, Luis. Say hi to Finita.